Hey everyone, we're live, pal. Andrew, I want to start this show off first by apologizing for missing last week because the previous times we missed was uh, your shoot job and and things going on in your life. And then last week, it was my shoot job. I think some people think that this is our shoot job. This is our real job. And anytime we miss, we're like lagging or something. But no, unfortunately, I had to go into the office, which I usually don't have to do generally. So uh, I, I had to go last week, so we missed it. But anyways, if we do have to miss a show, which we have done here and there, it is because of that reason, either family or job stuff. So just don't think that we're just missing it because we don't want to do the show. We always want to do this show. So how have you been, Andrew? I have been, uh, or, or when you're remodeling your house and you have no place to do a show. I mean, that happens right. too. Dude, look know. at that sign. It's also a possibility. Saturday night's main event sign. Holy cow. Did I not have that last awesome. week? Awesome. I don't remember it, but it's awesome. I got that, and I got an ECW one across from me that I'm going to swap next week. That is that is an awesome sign there. Hey, so we do have a bit of a special show today. At about the half an hour mark, one Vinny V is going to join us, and we're going to do a Q&A as similar to the Q&A that we did with Brian on episode 100 a few weeks ago. So Vinny will come in at about 1.30. We'll take super chats. And if you have a question for Vinny, you will get you can get that answered. Uh, and we'll just talk other stuff with, with Vinny V. He also has a solo show. Have you saw the big Vinny V show on the website? I think he I think it's specifically around TNA, but we can ask him. But he just put up a brand new podcast last night. So I have uh, before, not. I have not checked it out. Yeah. So obviously I want Brian and Brian and Vinny is a historical show on this website it even pre-exists wrestling observer radio it was like uh i mean one of the main draws early on was was brian and vinnie doing their shows i'll have to ask vinnie because i don't exactly remember when they started but it probably goes back to like 2005 maybe that's a long time to be doing a weekly radio show that's a very long time yeah that's that's incredible the the how i mean you know, they, they had they're really good friends for one, but I'm sure there have been moments where they're like, you know what? I hate you. I don't want to do this show anymore. But they still kept, <laughs> you know, they kept doing it. And it's it's really like I, it's one of the longest lasting radio shows, I'm guessing, in, in wrestling. Like what else has, has existed longer? Uh, Observer Live. <laughs> well, Observer it. Observer Live is one. And I, I'm going to guess. uh Pro Wrestling Insiders started their website around the 2004 time frame, I think, maybe even a little Pro bit Wrestling earlier Torch, than that. Yeah. Pro, Pro so. Wrestling Torch. I would have said Live Audio Wrestling would have been uh, up there, but they, they stopped after, I think, I think after, uh, what was it, like Anthem bought them, or bought the Fight Network, it became a whole thing. Uh, now we have and, and that's how I discovered wrestling. Dave. That's how I discovered yeah. the Wrestling Observer from uh, Live Audio Wrestling. I was a huge, huge fan of uh, of Live Audio Wrestling, and Dave would call in with the Observer Extra in the top of the second hour, and that's just how I got introduced to uh, Dave and uh, Iata and Brian, and then now you know Vinny's coming on. It it's amazing how certain people have lasted this long because this is not a you know, 20 years, 15 years is not something people do uh, when it comes to podcasting. It's it's fairly a new new venture. And most people yeah. that duck out after a couple of years, you know, it's so it says a lot about what Brian has done and what Vinny's done. Yeah, I'd read a stat and this is years ago. So that stat may have changed, but it was like some rare percentage of podcasts go beyond like 10 episodes or something like it's like a, there's there's a yeah. point in time, like a small number where a lot of the podcasts just die and and you know there's so many out there now i'm sure that that information has changed but how how many movies by the way do you think dave missed 20 minutes of to duck out and call live audio <laughs> wrestling to do his his extra i know he would he oh would be God. at movies and then he'd have to duck out he'd miss whatever the movie was and he'd come back in and but that's what he would do and he would do those calls well, i it, think it would have had to be because it was on at uh, 11 o'clock Eastern, right? Dave would call mm -hmm. in 11 p.m. Eastern. So, yeah, he was probably it was a Sunday night. He's doing whatever he was doing on a Sunday. And he would run out and call. 
<laughs> Amazing. All right. What are we going to talk about? So the last couple of weeks have been pretty chaotic with WrestleMania stuff. What did you think of Versace Rock coming out on Friday Night SmackDown looking like uh, a, a, just a, a more giant version of the 1999 Rock, heel Rock character? Uh, dude, I loved it. Uh, I I thought he did a great job. It was, it, But it was different. It wasn't the same hokiness that we've gotten over the last, I don't know, decade and a half with him. You know, when he comes back and he cuts these promos and he does sing along with The Rock and he does all the all the, the hits. Mm -hmm. And I even even that promo about Roman, uh, I don't know if we spoke about it, but it was it was OK. It was it was a it was a a Dwayne promo that mm -hmm. he's done for the last 10 years. Whenever he comes back, it didn't really mean anything until the end. I don't know if he caught on to this or or what, but whatever, whoever was involved, if it's uh, Brian Gewartz or or whoever, they did a fantastic job at repositioning him you know he was 1998 rock he was in his peak heel era uh i thought it was fantastic but his tone was different too it wasn't mm -hmm. this over the top rock promo it was this hybrid of you know the past and him talking like a normal person and not a pro wrestler cutting a promo looking at the camera and telling you <laughs> we're coming to your town next week you know he i thought it was fantastic uh Great job. I, I loved everything about it. I got so many calls about it. People were sending me links about it. So, I mean, that's the key here, right? That's right. what they want. They want people to talk about it. They want to get, you know, the 40-year-olds, the 45-year-olds back for this. That's that's what they're doing, and it's working. Yeah, when I was on uh, Saturday night with Dave, I was saying how most of the feedback I saw of people who were just ecstatic about the promo were people like my age or even a little bit younger who remember and lived through those times in 1999 when you got the corporate champion version of The Rock. And, you know, I the goal is to attract as many people as possible. You're not just trying to attract lapsed fans or people who only check in here and there. They're going to do the best job that they've ever done especially with Peacock and, you know, Peacock being, what, what were they selling it for? Like two bucks a month or three bucks a month over the, the holidays. Like a lot of people have Peacock now who didn't have it before. And this yeah. is going to be, I think it's going to be the best opportunity for them to find those casuals, those lapsed fans or whatever uh, for, for this time frame. Like I, you know, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of crazy to me with, what the public perception of this company should be coming out and of the Janelle is. Grant lawsuit and then what it actually is. How, like how little that lawsuit is hurting what they're doing right now. Like they are just full steam ahead. Now it may say something about the, the fan base where the fan base can overlook that stuff. But I, I mean, I don't know about you. Where are you with, uh, with wrestling right now? Jim Valley the last two weeks, I he's heard. done two yeah. really, really like heartfelt, uh, frustrated shows where he can't really get back into wrestling. He's almost wondering, like, you know, should everybody, you know, if you really care about this stuff, should you just stop watching? Is that a sign to WWE to clean up the stuff? Where are you with that stuff? Because I, I mean, I'm, I'm having trouble with it. But I also know in order to do the shows on this website that I have to do, I need to be pretty much in tune with the major things. So I kind of look yeah. at it how someone would look at it as a job rather than a passion, really. That's how I've kind of been keeping up with it. But what about you? Um, you know, I, I, I said this to Rich, uh, you know, off the air, because we, shockingly, I have not spoken about the Vince stuff yet on any of my shows. Uh, I, you and I touched on it a little bit. I've, I've gone on Fightful and I've spoken about it on, on their show. I, I haven't found an appropriate moment because generally like the show that I do with Rich is really silly, you yeah. know, and we're making jokes back and forth. And, and I, when we came back in studio, because last week was the first time we did, we did the show back in studio, uh, after the remodel, uh, I, I, I went on and I said, listen, I, I don't 
feel like this would be the show for me to talk about, you know, Rich and I haven't seen each other in like a month. We're probably going to be off the walls. I, I can't do that transition. But well, where I'm making this, this uh, you know, uh, off-color joke, and then I'm talking about Vince McMahon's very serious uh, sex trafficking and sexual abuse right. allegations. It's just, right. I, I can't do that switch. But I said to him off the air, you know, when the Benoit stuff happened, uh, I it, it really punched me in my stomach, and I, and I turned off wrestling for years. I mean, I would still keep up, but I became like a, a very casual follower of social media and i would put on raw for a little bit and i would read uh on observer what happened and right. i was still listening to dave and brian you know i was still listening at that point you know whenever there was something but 2017 28 uh 2007 8 9 it took me until the cm punk pipe bomb to really come back heavily uh and that's a shame because i lost out on a number of years of something that i very very much like because of one man's heinous disgusting selfish reason uh, of doing you know what he did he, it, it really affected me and and I, I i honestly if i wasn't doing this i probably would have had a harder stance on totally you know dropping wrestling to some extent mm -hmm. i probably would have been mm -hmm. affected by it a little bit more but you know this is my outlet this is my therapy i i love talking about wrestling and unfortunately there are going to be terrible moments that happen and it'll happen again because it's entertainment at the end of the day, whether it's someone passing away or, or God forbid something like this again, I have to be able to move past it and talk about it and have an open discussion with the audience and talk to you about it. You know, I, I think that is that's more important, especially in the roles that we're in. Right. This is I always say I'm blessed to be in this position when it comes to anything professional wrestling. Mm -hmm. I want to take advantage of that and talk about things like this you know obviously i haven't had that moment on my show but uh, on on matt men with rich but we've had that moment on on our show here i've i've had that moment on wrestling observer live to talk to mention it and talk about it i i totally understand where jim is coming from i listen to him and and he is you know i would say he is hurt by this because the the amount of years a lot of us have dedicated to professional wrestling and talking about mm -hmm. it and you know vince mcmahon to to all accounts you know is responsible for professional wrestling today and you now have to in a weird way ignore the fact that the guy that invented this is allegedly doing these disgusting things uh you know it's a little bit of a mind fuck you know if you think about it i didn't want to curse but i did uh <laughs> i where i i just i can't get it's so like even the text messages and I heard, you know, you and Dave were talking about this. The text messages were just a whole different level. Yeah. And at the at the best, at the best, at the best best this man is a really messed up sexual deviant. Yes. At the best case. The worst case is 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 heinous. So, you know, it's going to play out. It's going to come out. It, more information is going to come out about this. And we're going to talk about it for a long time. This is not going away. This is not something that's going to get swept under the rug. I hope not. There has to be yeah. an open dialogue about this. And the company's going to have to come forward and say more than they have. Which is nothing but, I, so I mean, far. Which has been nothing. You know, the saving grace for a lot of people is the fact that this is a different company. And Vince is not there. So it kind of, you know, the okay, at least we believe he's not media there, right? On them. At least we believe he's not. Because yeah. what did Ronda Rousey say that the last time that he left and she she actually fingered uh, Bruce Pritchard as the, the person who maybe was communicating for Vince. But that was the last time that he had gone. Like she said that, you know, of course, he, he was still there, you know, through another person. So, you know, I hope so. But. The way that we could be sure is if TKO decided to do an investigation of their own and really dig into their own house in this sense and yeah. figure out who should still be there and who shouldn't. Because there was some stuff coming out of the Ashley Massaro situation where it looked like Stephanie was part of the cover up back then. And Stephanie is not currently with the company right now, but she does have a husband who is uh, the 
head of creative uh, in, in that company. So uh, not to say that he is involved in any of that, but you don't know. And the fact that you don't know, you kind of have to find out because you do not want that culture to still exist in what you're doing right now. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, Terrible. It, it's terrible stuff. But man, you know. You bring Dwayne out and all of a sudden people forget about this, right? Then nobody talks about it. See, it, ESPN's not talking about it. None of the How news has, networks are talking about it. Nobody has asked him about it, which is kind of weird because you know he's there to do a lot of the media, right? Like he's going to be on television talking about WrestleMania. And I know he was on the Pat McAfee show. There's no way Pat is saying anything as someone who works for WWE. But I would hope that even he gets asked about this because he is now on the board. Now he can come in and, and possibly be the savior of everything and say that he's going to get things cleaned up or what, whatever is the case. But the fact that no one has asked him about it, I think, is, is pretty alarming. And, uh, you know, there's going to be, you know, Ari Emanuel, like he and, and Shapiro, they need to come out with statements to just tell folks and tell sponsors, hey, the thing that you are investing in and you're putting your money into, uh, we are we are making sure that this thing is legitimate and, and, and cleaned up. And I'm sure that those conversations have happened. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm almost certain of it. When we saw the the Slim Jim ad get pulled and come back and Vince step down, I, I think they 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 went into. I don't want to say a lot of stuff that I was told there, but I know that they went into, you know, DEFCON one levels and, and tried mm -hmm. to smooth everything over and saying, listen, this is not a Vince McMahon company. This is an Endeavor company. We're not the same company. We, we hold people accountable. I mean, they, they did they did the typical corporate spiel. Let's see. I hope it is true. I hope they do hold people accountable. I hope they this is a very different company. Nobody wants to be in a workplace like that. All right. We got about 10 minutes before Vinny V is going to come on with us. Ultimately. With Elimination Chamber this weekend, it sounds like they are still building to this tag team match that I think a lot of people think is happening. This rumored tag team match of Roman and Rock against Cody and Seth, because Cody and Seth are on the Waller, uh, the Grayson Waller effect on the Elimination Chamber show. So I imagine if we are going to see a tag team match, they're going to at least start setting that thing up on Saturday, you think? I guess. I guess everybody's working twice on WrestleMania weekend, except for Dwayne. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, that is kind of weird. It is weird. I just, you know, one, no, Seth man. is... What do you do? What Seth... do you do? What do you... God forbid. God forbid something happens on night one. What do you right. do with your main event then? No, I mean, I'm with you. Uh, well, I, you know, I think what they would do is they would try and tape it up and, and still do it anyways. But Seth has got a bum knee. Uh, the Rock is last two times he's been back he's gotten injured uh, and th and that was a long time ago you're talking uh what wrestlemania 28 and 29 yeah. uh and you know roman very so rarely wrestles and cody is the workhorse of all workhorses so he's constantly wrestling but yeah it is it, it's something that you know i'm sure they're crossing their fingers about but let also me, let me ask you something let me ask you something about that okay because uh we we've We've heard the narrative shift a couple times. First, it was, well, this is all part of the plan. Then it was, it was a pivot, obviously. Where do you fall in this? Because this definitely looks like they pivoted. This was not yeah, the long-term plan. Because why did they have Cody come out and bow out of WrestleMania if this is where they were going to go? They could have done all of this just without that little, little thing that they did there. I would suggest that if people are wondering about this, go read Dave's lead story or not, not his lead story. He the Masaro incident was his lead story, but the, the story surrounding the machinations behind what's going on with this main event, because according to Dave's story, they were going to go with rock versus Roman. And then when they heard the booze, they pivoted because the rock doesn't want to get booed unless he's a heel. He did not want to get booed as a baby face because he has a reputation as an entertainer and his his actual job is to sell tickets to a, to movies that he stars in. And he, you're also so he setting up the program for failure. 
that I mean, when that happens, right? You're telling well, me he's a good yeah. guy. I should be liking him. And then I'm booing him. It sets up the whole program to failure. So unfortunately, it sounds like this is very much driven by him, though. It sounds like he's like, look, let's give them the Cody and Roman thing and I'll still be involved, but we will lean into the heel of the heel run of the bloodline. So that sounds like it was the pivot. But also what Dave wrote is like. There's lots of stuff going on behind the scenes that are probably going to play out in, in the storyline. And I'm assuming he means the Triple H versus the Rock dynamic that they have instilled in this. So that is, uh, yeah, that is a, a really interesting story to tell about how we're getting to WrestleMania. And you would think, and this is really like if you think about the rock coming in this is a little bit of probably got to be screwing with his head is the two times he came out to just get a sense of the crowd the the live crowd cheered him tremendously so i'm sure he's like okay like they definitely want to see this when he did that that uh head of the table line at raw and the crowd was like whoa he probably figured okay like this is a go and but then yeah. with cody also telling this side b storyline it just all of a sudden made cody the absolute underdog who's getting screwed by the big boss and then that created the dynamic that they had so yeah i i mean i don't know if this is the necessarily the best thing to do i think in most wrestling avenues historically they would have still pushed forward but it does sound like it was pretty much rock's decision i'm sure with input from other people to change it in this direction. Yeah. Yeah. I listen. And, and I thought it was great on, on, on Friday. They did a great job Friday. I thought Monday that match between uh, Drew and Cody was fantastic. It was as close to a pay-per-view level match you could have on television. Uh, I was shocked to segments? see Cody eat that pin. Were you shocked he that pin? he lost? Yeah. 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 But it was a good shock. You know, yeah, it adds it more to the story. And I think Drew... You know, and, and here's the other thing. And Drew's been, uh, this run of Drew has been fantastic too. I mean, they've really, everybody's getting positioned better, including Seth, which I thought was doing the goofiest stuff. And I love him. He's fantastic. He, great. He's yeah. great. And he was doing something, uh, you know, that, that, was, that was insane. He looked like a clown coming out there. He was having fun and he's laughing and he's joking and he's screaming. He's, He's shifting too a little bit. I, I think overall their TV has shifted astronomically. Did you see that incredible uh, one cut shot they did of the ramp last night? It was during that eight man. Yes, yes. And they went down. They went down the ramp, and I'm I'm thinking I'm like, wow, this looked great. The ring wasn't as lit as it was. It was a little bit dimmer in that building. You know, it's it feels like a better show. And I know, listen, I, I, I know our audience is more heavy in AEW. Listen, so am I. I I'm not, I don't lie about my bias. I like AEW's wrestling a, a little bit better here, but I, I got to applaud them for the, sh the changes that they've done over the last, I don't know, six weeks. It has been an improvement for sure. It feels like an attempt to change something that was a little bit long in the tooth. And they probably couldn't change because of who was in charge there. Uh, but yeah, I, I agree with you. Um, it looks like we do have one Vinny V on a couple minutes early. John, do you oh. want to patch Vinny V in? What's up? Hey, well, hello, everyone. Is, Vinny. How you doing? It's me. It's me. It's me. It's me. It's big Vinny V. Hey, everyone. How are we doing today? Pretty good. Hey, good. first of all. I uh, want to thank you for jumping on with us. I know this is a little bit of a weird time for us West Coasters to do a show. I always tell the fans that I have to take a lunch break to do the show at this time. So <laughs> appreciate you jumping on and, uh, and being on with us. But uh, what, so for the people who are watching, if you uh, if you do want to get some super chats in and ask Vinny V some questions, we'll go ahead and get that started. But Andrew and I were kind of wondering about the origin story of the Brian and Vinny show. And I'm trying to remember, cause I've been, a, I was a member of this website starting in, I think I want to say May or June of 2005. And it wasn't much longer after Brian had actually kicked off the website. When does the Brian and Vinny show come into play? So 
Brian had the Figure Four Weekly newsletter, which he started sometime in the mid to late nineties, and uh, he was producing this. And in the early two thousands, decided to go to a web based model. This is honestly his goal at the time was merely to save on shipping costs. To, uh, yes, to eliminate, very smart. To eliminate postage. That's all he wanted to do. <laughs> to distribute the newsletter via email and PDF and what have you. Uh, as a joke one time, I forget which exactly started first. I think uh, someone sent us a link to a video of a tag team uh, from Memphis or, 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 or Continental, Alabama in the, uh, in the mid eighties. Uh, oh God, I forget their name now, but uh, the, the tag team is two, it was two muscular men with fine hair and beards. And uh, I think they were, meant to be very aggressive and scary but watching it in modern eyes it just comes off as the most homoerotic thing you ever saw in your life and uh so we did an audio clip of this our, our live reaction to this and uh that was popular it went like you know three minutes and people seemed to enjoy it and wanted more and uh the other one it may have been was the very original diva search on monday night raw uh they did a segment yes. with an obstacle course where uh, you know, it's been 20 years now, but as I recall, there was like a half dozen near fatalities. Uh, I, I, I say this out loud, and I kind of feel bad for making comedy out of this, but no one actually died. So uh, we did these two weird little audio bits of, uh, of uh, laughing at strange wrestling things. They were successful and popular. And uh, Brian Alvarez, being an entrepreneurial spirit, said, well, hey, there's an audience here. Let's see if we can meet it. He started doing podcasts. Uh, I was dragged along, essentially kicking and screaming. To be perfectly frank, I tried to get fired several times, and uh, he refused <laughs> to fire me. And uh, here we are today. We were talking Vinny, about. You know, I. It, no, go I ahead, Andrew. Came in. I came in. Uh, you know, I came in from uh, the introduction to Brian through through the Observer Radio Show. You know, through IATA. Uh and then I discovered obviously you and Brian and and the the hysterical TNA reviews that yes, uh, took years off of Brian's life I know I know for a fact to the point that he 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 pulled right you guys were doing it again and he stopped it he couldn't he couldn't do it anymore <laughs> we, we we tried to go back just, just last summer in fact we just tried to go back yeah. and rewatch the original TNA weekly pay-per-views and I think we made it about 18 weeks and we said you know what no this sucks too much we we, we can't we can't do this every single week we did take a break and uh, we, we never said we will never go back and do them again, but uh, they're, they're they're terrible and not even in a we can laugh at this terrible kind of way. They're terrible in a my life sucks. This is this is ruining my quality of life <laughs> and my uh, and my uh, my mental health. And uh, we need to stop watching. So did you, perhaps, did you guys get to the sports entertainment extreme stuff or no? You we didn't did not even, even make it, it that far. No, we never. Oh, actually, my we, gosh. We, I, I, I think <laughs> I you're teasing. The appearance of Vince Russo, but uh, honestly, the worst thing we saw was the Dups, uh, who were just like, I, I seriously think in hindsight, this is the worst gimmick I ever saw because Jack, it was a, uh, it was Bo and Stan Dup, I believe, were the two that were in TNA. And when you watch them, they're talented wrestlers. I mean, one of them became uh, 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 Trevor Murdoch and, you know, had two, a two decade run. He knows what the hell he's doing. But the gimmick was so awful, it made me want to never, ever watch them again. And I think people forget this. There, there's the most notorious shot in the early days of TNA is the little person fondling himself in a trash can. I think that's what everyone talks about. What no one talks about is that literally in the same camera shot, the camera pans over. There's a segment with the Dups and Goldilocks, the interview woman, that is significantly worse. <laughs> and I am convinced to this day that as soon as the little person appeared touching himself, the vast majority of the audience turned off the show and never came back. Because it got worse than that by far. That is I, that, I, that I, is crazy. The the amount of of hours that you guys put into watching heinous wrestling uh, should should be should be accounted for the the over the years. I, I I've always been curious because you you guys still outside of you know outside of the funny stuff you guys do your reviews you guys review NXT and you guys review AEW every week and I've always. You know, that's something that I'm terrible at doing, and that's reviewing shows. I've always wanted to know, and this is my question, you know. I, I know the audience is going to submit questions, and some are going to be super chats. We have a couple of questions here lined up. I encourage everybody to do so. But my question is, what is your process of doing these reviews? When, when you sit down to watch the show, how do you 
How do you watch it? Uh, before I answer that question, I do want to uh, uh, clarify something. The tag team that we reviewed the the the, the uh, video clip of it to begin with all this. The New Generation was their name. It was Johnny Wilhoit and Brad Batten in the CWA in 1984. So if you'd like to, the clip is out there. <laughs> New Generation, Brian Vinny. You can see all of this match. Uh, how do we review shows? Um, I simply just watch down. And, and it, you know, it's been, I've been doing this now for coming up on 20 years. Um, I pretty much just open my notepad and I start talking about what I see in the match that is notable or exciting or uh, interesting. Uh, I do have a... a, a Slightly different viewpoint. There's a lot of people out there who have watched wrestling for a long time and paid attention. I did attempt to become a professional wrestler. I went through training. I learned how to hit the ropes and take bumps and uh, mostly tear down instead of the ring. That is what I did for the most part. Um, I was certainly quite horrible at it. And I uh, there's a reason you've never heard of me or seen me or any of that stuff. But uh, if, if, if you dig really, really hard through the catacombs of the interwebs, you can find some of my terrible, terrible stuff out there. But uh, having that viewpoint, I think, does help me uh, know a, a different uh, uh, outlook on what's happening in the ring, what is hard, what is difficult, what's not as hard as it looks, what hurts more than it looks, what, hurt, what hurts less than it looks, that kind of thing. So I, I know, you know what I'm looking for. I, I look at it uh, through the viewpoint of someone who, who has tried and failed to do this, but tried nonetheless, and uh, kind of knows what the goal should be. Um, but it's, it's, you know, it's, it's like I said, I just open my, my notes and uh, type down what I see. And there's sometimes, you know, uh, Young Bucks matches in particular, uh, we call them just call them party matches because you'll start taking notes on what they do and you'll look down and you've written 75,000 words and you're five minutes in. <laughs> and you know, well, this, this is not good for review. And you go back and you just read, you know, erase, erase a lot of stuff. So kind of trial and error and uh, uh, experience. His experience is the best teacher. Okay. I'm, I'm going to go back a little bit for I'm sure there's a lot of audience members who don't go back quite this far. But there was a time when you and Brian had a match that came out of donations yes. from the F4W Empire. I don't even remember the premise, but it was like, if you guys can get up match X number of, of, uh, th of, of money, then we're good. We'll have this match and we'll video it. Buddy Wayne, Nick's mm -hmm. father yes, was involved. Yes. Young Nick you guys... is seen in the battle of the empire running around the background. He's like three or something. Yeah. And you guys do like a whole build there's interviews, there's mm -hmm. weigh-ins. Um, and I, it's just th me thinking about that as someone who's been on this website forever. Like, I, I remember it like it was yesterday when this thing happened. Do you have any new fans or maybe new subscribers reach out to you guys and, and wonder about this, the, the origin story of this entire Battle of the Empire? Uh, it's been a while. Um, since anyone's brought it up, you know, asking questions about it, um, sometimes people just tell me they enjoyed it, um, which is nice to hear. Uh, but that, that story was, you know, we the, again, it was the infancy of the website. We had, I don't know the exact numbers, but maybe a few hundred listeners. Uh, so it was much smaller than it is now, at least the listenership was. Um, and someone raised brought up the possibility of doing a match as a joke. And we threw out a number out there, which... In my mind was simply i threw out a number that i thought was so large that it would never get met and i would never then have to do this i'd, I'd you know re resign myself I, I tried this sucked at it didn't want to do it no more and uh lo and behold we tripled the amount so <laughs> well damn it i gotta do a match now and uh andrew i was part of that monetary Were donation you? there oh, yes i i put in some money because i was then sent a dvd of the entire event there you go. yes 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 and if you have that DVD cover, which I don't have handy, I didn't even mention this, but uh, the, the front cover shot is one of my favorite pictures of myself ever taken. I am based the Orange Cassie's uncle. Uh, <laughs> the, 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 the gimmick is very similar. The, the, the reluctant wrestler who doesn't want to do this and does not want to train. And we did whole videos about how lazy <laughs> I was and how, how not serious I was taking this. And unfortunately, I lived the gimmick. And when that time came to do the match, it was rough going. It was I was not in shape. I was not trained. I was significantly less than 100%. I may have been about 40%. <laughs> Andrew, have you ever seen this? I, I have not. No. Oh, dear. I, yes, I'm, yes. The Battle of the Empire. I have not. Uh, I'm, I'm shocked I haven't seen it, actually. 
I, I'm Brian like, uh, takes a bump in a kiddie swimming pool. Yes. Uh, the, the, the tribute to Club Lavella from the Nitro days. Uh, that, the, the that, ring is I was going to say, it was great, great Cl Club Lavella reference. Yes, yes. The, the I, ring is... I, how is this not on the uh, YouTube subscribers page? Like the entire event should just be for subscribers to the YouTube channel. They should be able to watch that. If I don't, watch I'm it. on the wrong person to ask. That's up to Brian, his brother-in-law, producer, Tony. They kind of, I'm going to, I'm going to send that, Tony that, a note this, right send, now. Send this. Yeah. Tell him right he, now. He, he, he may, there's a, there's a very, very realistic chance that Brian is still refusing to put it out there for free and is still trying to milk customers for money. So you may, <laughs> have, to, you may have to pay to see it again. Well, that's a good way. You know, I think the YouTube uh, subscriber uh, channel that uh, Andrew and I, post for free on this channel but there is a subscriber tier where wrestling observer radio and brian and Vinny exist i mean i think that might be that might be able to draw a, a little bit of people to subscribe to the channels if we put that out there but um so andrew do we have any questions for Vinny yet yeah i got a bunch of questions here uh I bet you do. <laughs> here's one let me see is this how i do it here we go do you regret losing the hair match I regret almost everything about the hair match. Uh, when Brian, <laughs> you know, Brian was a much, Brian was a much better wrestler than I was. That's for sure. Uh, he's a, you know actually a, a trained athlete and uh, uh, you know gymnast for years and all that kind of thing. And I was just a big clumsy oaf. But uh, we we did a build to a hair match, and uh, suffice to say, everything that could have gone wrong went wrong. Uh, we were the, the 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 Booker was screaming at us backstage. I believe before the match started because we didn't do the entrance even exactly the way he wanted. That threw us off our game. The match was terrible. We were still uh, most, uh, and frankly, it's been a long time since I thought about this closely. But most of the match we had uh, scripted and planned out, and the script was a bad one, and the audience didn't react to it, and we did not go off that at all. So we had a terrible match. Now we're in a rotten mood. We go to do the actual haircut, and uh, the clippers aren't working. Um, I think when I left, they the never ring, do. I, no, I, th I think when, I, when we left the ring, I probably had longer hair than I do right here on this video. Um, <laughs> and I uh, went to the barber the next day, told them a story about uh, uh, getting blackout drunk at a party and uh, having my friends cut my hair because that was less embarrassing than talking about this actual hair match. And uh, yeah, I never grew out again. I had, I had very long hair at one point, like down the middle of my back. And uh, uh, some days I miss it, and some days I think I am 48. And I'm not. <laughs> I see a uh, Dion Sanders jersey yes, yes. behind you. Yeah, this. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, you mentioned, uh, you know, training for wrestling, and that's a, that's a little bit of a, a blueprint for you to be able to cover wrestling. Now, I know you're a, a football guy as well. Did that? Did, did you play, or were you just a giant fan, and you just understood? what you were watching uh, very clearly like how does the how does the, the the football background come in uh i played in my uh, uh through my sophomore year in high school i did not play as a junior or senior i was this one might be funny to uh if you've ever heard brian discuss me in any way but in high school i was incredibly skinny i was as tall as a 100 pound lighter probably more um and I, there's a picture i have of me as a sophomore my my football uniform and it looks like a, a parody of uh, like Space Marines. It's just normal sized shoulder pads, but on my body, they're these big, giant kingdom sized things. It, it looks like a, a sad joke. So uh, I got beat up a lot, and I said, you know what? I don't, don't like this too much. So I did not play after my sophomore year of high school. Um, uh, but I've, I'm still a fan and loved watching, spending my Sundays uh, in the sports bar watching multiple football games at once. And figured the best way to have an excuse to do this every weekend and not see friends and family was to make it my job. And uh, spent the better part of two decades attempting to become a football writer. And it uh, was going okay for a while. And then last year, uh, just about this time, really, it started to go up in flames. Uh, if you could all check out Mike Tanier on Threads and uh, Threads and Twitter. And he wrote a story for The Defector on uh, what happened to the various newsrooms he worked for, including Football Outsiders, and how it was incinerated by those in power. And uh, so I found myself no longer being a football writer anymore and said, well, I guess I'm just a podcaster. Now I better dive into this full time. Well, that was my next go. question for you. Does Vinny still write football? Uh, right now is zero. Um, there will still be 
Uh, Aaron Schatz, my old boss of Football Outsiders, is still producing an annual almanac. He now works for FTNFantasy.com. Uh, so I believe the official title is Aaron Schatz's FTN Fantasy Almanac. The book will still be produced this year. I still do uh, 100% of the layout. That's 500 plus pages. I do have a journalism degree from Western Washington University. Uh, yes, graduated with a journalism degree in 1999, just in time for print media to die. Uh, but regardless, <laughs> uh, regardless I, I still know how to use Adobe InDesign and Korg Express. And so uh, I do the layout for the book. And I, the plan right now is for me to write a couple of chapters as well, uh, although I've not heard which chapters, so I can't keep you informed there. We'll see, see how things go. But as far as actually during the season, no, I, 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 uh, uh, no, no professional commitment at all. And I'm still a fan. Every once in a while, I will share some stuff. I still like looking up fun little research nuggets that I share. But uh, no, I, I made uh, $0 covering pro football in 2023. There you go. Yeah. Rough. In, I, get, but I, I did. I did I, I'm sorry. I did lay out the book. I made a few dollars <laughs> uh, uh, as a football journalist, but it was merely on the editorial side, not on the writing side. Here's another right, question Andrew, for you. you got, this is a good one. What is the worst argument you and Brian have had? <laughs> uh, so it depends what you mean by worst. I mean, there's several hundred of them where we both just sound like complete idiots. Um, or, 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 <laughs> or arguing over something incredibly minor, but it's important to us, and so we will not back down. I mean, uh, why does everyone know the worst thing I ever did, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's your favorite show? Well, where did you sound best? No. What's the what best I'm argument? Uh, pork chops. You're gonna let all my eyes on pork chops. That's for sure. Oh, uh, really? That's him. That's him. My 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 my, uh, my food related hill to die on is that there is no such thing as boneless chicken wings. There is chicken wings and there's chicken nuggets, and uh, there's nothing in between. That's uh, but no no one no one seems to care about that as much as they care about Brian Alvarez not liking pork chops or pork chops. So. Here's a uh, here here's a four ninety nine from Cadillac Carson. I don't know how I can't I turn this that, one off. That one that one must I be pull for that you, one up, Andrew. I didn't pull it up. There we go. Oh, there you go. Oh, okay. So oh. our producer's doing it because he he gave up on my ability to <laughs> click a button. <laughs> Literally, what just happened? John got fed up on how long I'm keeping things on the screen and not keeping it on the screen, <laughs> so he took over. Which I totally that was my plan all along. <laughs> Vinny, what is the worst match you have ever reviewed? Easy. Not to be mean to the participants involved, just oh. for answering. Thanks, just for answering the question. Thanks. Oh, I, I'll, I'll answer the question. I'll be very mean to the participants involved. They deserve it. Rebel versus Shelly Martinez in TNA. Yeah, it's it's offensive. Uh, it's offensive to everyone who has ever gone to a wrestling show, let alone stepped through the ropes and attempted to do it themselves. I never had a match that bad, and I was awful, awful. I once took a bump for a clothesline that was not thrown. And I assure you, I was a better wrestler than you saw in this match. Um, it's 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 appalling, and I, I don't mind being mean because I don't think they were actually trying. I'm I, I I and if they were trying, they were clearly on some very powerful mind altering substances. But when you when uh, if you've never seen the match, the most most memorable, far from the only problem, but the most memorable pro uh, uh, spot is Rebel locks Shelly on the mat and something similar to a banana splits. You're, you know, it's, it's a groin pole submission hold. And I can't believe I'm even going to repeat this, but Shelly Martinez, a grown woman on a pro wrestling show, begins to scream, my vag, my vag. And the ref is so taken back, he says, what? <laughs> and she says, I said my vag hurts. And uh, <laughs> it goes downhill from there. But, yeah, uh, well, there was yeah. a plancha through the bottom rope that didn't work out either. I, that is, that is what I remember from that match. Yeah. There is a dive. I, th I think it's Rebel. Uh, and if it was not Rebel, Shelly, I apologize. But uh, it doesn't work. And yes, the, 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 the diver never actually makes it out of the ring and is left hanging in the ropes like a pair of tennis shoes thrown over a telephone wire or something. And uh, if you go back and watch this, you'll see it the first time. Then go back and watch it. And there's like eight or nine people in the crowd and take the time to just watch them one by one because there's one guy who's clapping and he just freezes. And there's one guy who's watching and he sees the dive get hung up and simply goes like this. He's so embarrassed for himself to be there. <laughs> it is a, a crime against sports, entertainment, art, physicality, humanity in general. That's the answer. So good. 
So Andrew, good. before that, for the next question, I have one. Yeah. Um, and this is for my own selfish reasons, but Vinny, the uh, every May, every Memorial Day weekend, we get together mm. for the website. And the origin story of that, from what I remember, surrounds Ed in San Antonio inviting yes. you and Brian out to Vegas. What is your recollection of that story? No, that's true. Ed, Ed was a listener, uh, one, one of the, you know, 50 he had. And uh, Ed said he had planned a party for his friends in Las Vegas, a get together for his friends in Las Vegas. He had already booked all the rooms and set aside, uh, you know, he's going to buy everyone's food. And his friends, they, they fell through, they couldn't go. And so he invited Brian and I. And we're like, oh, that's not scary at all. A stranger inviting <laughs> us to meet in the in the, in the desert, the, the the a place literally called Sin City, and uh, nothing bad can happen. So we went, <laughs> and uh, we were joined by I think it was, I think it was, it was actually a, literally exactly a dozen people showed up uh, to join us, and uh, and we had a great time, and uh, nothing went wrong. I can't. Well, let me take it back. Some things went wrong, but they yeah. gave us an excuse to make fun of Ed, and uh, yes. and uh, it would be many more excuses to make fun of Ed over the years. So we uh, did it again the next year and the next and the next. And it has been, you know, coming up on uh, 15 years or so that we've been doing this. And uh, the plan is to go back this year, Memorial Day weekend in uh, 2024. Yes, the F4W convention. Now, Andrew, I don't know if you've even yes, seen these, but there are photos of Brian, Vinny and Ed. Are you guys in a parking lot or something? And Ed's got these cones sitting on top of his head. Yeah, I am not sure how much of the story I should tell Papa. <laughs> suffice to say, uh, remember earlier I mentioned mind-altering substances. <laughs> Ed had a few, and uh, we're in a parking lot of an establishment I will not name, and uh, I don't think specifically I could either. But I, I, uh, I could, what the venue you can imagine what we might have been doing in Las Vegas, and uh, Ed was so hammered. Uh, and Ed had gotten into some trouble that we had to bail him out of. Mm. And uh, so, but he was in a great mood. Oh, he was having the time of his life. And so some were sitting out there trying to get him to stand up and get into the uh, taxi or the limo or whatever we had. And somebody said, get that traffic cone. And we put a traffic cone on Ed's head. And in Ed's state of mind at the time, he, I, I don't even know if he knew I was there. But he certainly didn't mind. And so, yeah, uh, we we're, were all smiling with Ed and... And I'm there in like uh, like a plain t-shirt and khaki shorts and sandals and uh, looking like a tool. And uh, uh, but there's Ed. <laughs> Ed, Ed, Ed. At least there's no traffic going on my head. Oh, that's hilarious! All right, Andrew, what else we got? Here's one. Benny, who are some of your favorite mm -hmm. wrestlers of all time? Uh, Shawn Michaels is the guy growing up. Who, uh, well, yeah, there's a lot of wrestlers who I've uh, uh, enjoyed and, and, and admired and. Uh, 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 appreciated. Sean's the one who, who, the only one who ever wanted to be. And this is, uh, uh, you know, mid nineties, Sean Michaels, uh, you know, world champion, having great matches every single show at a time when, you know, the, the other top wrestlers were, I don't know, Mantar or, 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 or uh, you know, coming out of the, well, Yoko, Yokozuna was great, but you know, Sean was so head and shoulders. Adam Bob. What else? Adam Bob. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he was so, head and shoulders above everyone else at the time. He was the one I actually wanted to be. And, uh, you know, now that we've, we've time has passed, I've learned more about uh, uh, what Sean was going through at the time. I, I'm probably better off not having been him. Uh, <laughs> I don't think it would work out for me as well. Um, but, you know, uh, uh, Michaels, Danielson, uh, I've, I've said for a while, the best, the best main event wrestler I've ever seen is Okada, uh, although Osprey is uh, making a run at that. Um, uh, Omega, I said they answered already. Uh, I love Orange. You just want my favorite wrestlers, Orange Cassidy. Um, you know, we, we had a question on, on our show about what was the best period of wrestling that we've ever been in. I'm like, dude, you're in it. Enjoy this. It's not usually oh, this yeah. good. Yeah. I don't know if it'll be this. I don't know how long it will be this good, but for God's sake, appreciate and enjoy what you're going through right now. This, this is the best period for in ring wrestling ever, ever, ever. End of sentence, no argument. Um, and for those talking favorites, and of course, there's a Huge difference between favorite and best. But one of my very, very favorite wrestlers is the Mountie. Because you've never seen a guy who just had so much fun doing his gimmick. 
as Jacques Rougeau when he got to put on that red jacket and that hat and those sunglasses and be the Mountie and sing about how he was handsome and brave and strong. Mountie, Mountie is a classic, classic uh, character there. Um, before, I, I don't want to forget this. Uh, I know we have some questions left, but the big Vinny V show, you're doing a solo show. Yeah. yeah. And for, and from what I, what I've seen, it, is it a TNA review show? Well, yes, as uh, we discussed, I found myself uh, late in 2023, realizing I am now a full-time podcaster. It's time. I had these two jobs, these two careers, and I always figured what one of them would take off and I pursued that one full-time. And they kind of, for a while, were growing parallel to each other. And uh, then one, you know, died. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> full-time podcaster, I should be doing more of this and uh, just experimenting with a solo show. And boy, uh, there's some experimentation going on, uh, especially on the tech end apparently yesterday's show uh while i had a microphone in front of me and it was plugged in apparently it was not set uh to be the default mic so i was recording it just directly to my laptop but which is better than two or three weeks ago when the show ended with about eight minutes of dead dead silence so yeah i'm uh, still very much learning how to do the tech end and because i've been doing we have all been there for 20 years yeah. but uh all i do is show up sit on the mic run my mouth for a while and go home I don't pay. I have never paid attention to uh, the actual posting of the of the of the audio files and promoting and uh, writing it all up and all that stuff. So I'm, I'm still learning how to do all all that part of it. But uh, anyway, yeah. Uh, the, the goal was to do a show. Uh, so I did one covering uh, Wrestle Kingdom um, immediately afterwards. I think I finished that show at 5 a.m. here on the West Coast. And uh, took a week or two off. People seemed to like that, so I said, "Okay, let's try something else." I reviewed Raw one, one week, and uh, the feedback I got was, we enjoy you doing your show, but do not watch Monday Night Raw. I, I literally ran a poll, what do you want me to watch? And the, the number one answer was anything but Monday Night Raw. So, <laughs> right. uh, so I did TNA, and uh, that, that TNA happened to be the week that Josh Alexander versus Will Ospreay was on, which I have not seen uh, Ospreay and Oku, and I have not yet seen Danielson and Zack Sabre, but for what I have seen... Uh, Josh Alexander and Will Ospreay is my favorite match thus far of 2024. So, uh, well, that's great. I'll watch this every week. And, uh, of course, it hasn't been that good every single week. But it has been a good show, and people seem to enjoy the reviews. So, uh, as long as those two things are going on, that will be the uh, subject matter of the Big Vinny V Show every Monday afternoon or evening at FRWOnline.com. I, as you grow in this new venture... And if you could possibly eventually bring some guests on, I have a guest request for you. A guest I request, think you, all right. I think you may actually be able to get him on. Now, uh, in 2019, when AEW was first beginning, they ran a pay-per-view, Double or Nothing, and Dave and I went out to the ticket party. They had like a, a presser. None other than Bill Barnwell was there and I got, to talk, <laughs> okay. I got to talk to bill for like 20 minutes like i had no idea he was even a wrestling fan oh, yeah. but i think if anybody could get bill to talk wrestling it, it possibly could be you that would be a fun show to listen to bill actually got me started as getting paid to write about football because i was commenting on the football outsiders uh articles they didn't have message boards but they had a comment section and i was a frequent participant there and uh, they had an opening for a copy editor, and I applied for that. And uh, Bill was a listener, one of our dozens of listeners. And he put in a good word for me and uh, got me on board there. And uh, so, yeah, uh, he, I, I owe him a favor, uh, like permanently. Uh, no, Bill's a good dude. Uh, of course, he writes for ESPN. He's been writing for ESPN for, for years now. Uh, last time I saw him was the New Japan Ring of Honor show at Madison Square Garden. And... Uh, it's got a chance to talk to their talk to him there, and Bill's a good dude. Uh, request noted. I can't make any promises because, as a, we know, Bill's a busy guy and he's got a lot going yes. on. Yes, but I, I'm uh, too much of a chicken to ask him myself because I'm like, I just I've only talked to him that couple, that one time, but I know Vin, I know Vinny V knows him pretty well. Yeah. So. Uh, request. I'll, I'll say request noted. Uh, the goal is to get guests on soon, but since I'm still working on doing the show by myself and not having something go chaotically wrong, so uh, I don't think I'm ready for that yet. But Hopefully in a month or two, we can start having guests on. And I, I, I will note that uh, there's a request for Mr. Barnwell to join us. All right, Andrew, I think we got a couple more Super Chats before we get out of here. We've got a couple more Super Chats here. Comic Book Guy says, or asks, what should AEW do to improve metrics and get hot again? I think this is like a general question for all of us. But sure, Vinny, you should sure. go first. 
Well, um, I mean, that's it's kind of easier said than done. You know, it's not like it's not like you just flip a switch and say, "Okay, our ratings are up twenty percent now." Um, the the hmm. <laughs> I think I think the new phases we're going to see in and around the Boston show. Uh, we we know one name is going to debut that night. That will help. Uh, there there may be more coming, and I, I think that influx of talent will help a lot. Um, they've kind of been snake bitten with injuries. I, you know, I, I think MJF would still be champion if he had not gotten hurt. Uh, I think he, they probably do the exact same thing with Swerve and Hangman, uh, with MJF, uh, or they may have MJF, go, you know, feuding with Adam Cole, uh, Adam Cole, except he got hurt. So, uh, it's a little bit of, of, of a bad misfortune, you know, the, the, with the plans being thrown awry due to injury and a, a little bit of, uh, lack of cohesion, a lack of uh, uh, long-term show-to-show, um, I, I hate this term, but storytelling. But uh, uh, each episode feels more like a self-contained thing than part of a larger sto- larger theme, a, l- a larger plot uh, going on. And uh, it, w- it would help them a lot more if they, if they could... You know, each episode should leave you not just happy about what you've just seen, but looking forward to what happens next. And mm-hmm. they don't always do that. Yeah, I agree with yeah. him 100 percent. This is something that I've constantly been talking about. I like the idea of cliffhangers or even I know a lot of people don't watch Rampage and and we're starting to, to go there with Collision as well. But you know, reward the people who are watching every single show with continuous stuff. And uh, I think to me, the other thing is if you have a person who gets hot, let's figure out how hot they can get. And the latest one has been Swerve. Now, I think Swerve at the end of 2023 was on fire. And I don't feel like he is as currently hot as he was at the end of 2023, because now they have to get him into a title match and the booking there has not been as good for him as it was in the past. So I, I, I don't, that, that's a harder one because you only have so many pay-per-views and you, you have long-term ideas and you can't just hot shot everybody who gets hot into the, into that spot. But I would like to see them take advantage of folks who do get, hot and uh and see how hot you can how hot can swerve get can swerve be the top guy i have no idea but he does feel a little less hot than he was just a couple months ago what about you andrew i would say it's never it's never one thing you know it's a multitude of things obviously Vinny hit the nail on the head the injuries have been uh just from the beginning of this company's you know i guess since punk went there Omega was hurt for a while. He went away, came back. Uh, Punk, the on-game with Punk. There was so much turmoil happening and instability. That obviously played a part. But also, the other part is the business end of stuff, right? Better marketing. Promote your events. Let me know who's on the show. You know, Dynamite's tomorrow. What are the matches? Promote them for weeks on end. Build it up like you used to, you know? I always said that the the thing that made this company special. Uh, can we go like five minutes over, Garrett, today? Yeah, yeah, I'm good. So I don't want to. I don't want to uh, go on this uh, rant and then and then we're at the time. Um, you know, on, what? Are, and I'm going to give two examples, and I use this all the time. If I if you promoted a Trent Beretta and a Cesaro match, right, a Claudio match. That meant something. I was into it. I wanted to see what was going to happen. I was watching. I would be committed to that. And and I'm just using those two, two as a random match because they were promoted. And you're like, oh, I've never seen this before. They had a way to present it. Now, nothing is, is presented like WWE where it's a nothing match. And obviously, it's going to be a good match, you know, because you got two great talents. But it doesn't go anywhere from there. I, I think they're, they're going back the basics now we're seeing it with their tv also somebody said they're on fire right now they're doing good you gotta look at the six week trend for the next six weeks where are they going to be i think revolution is going to be the answer here you know post-revolution we're going to see mercedes and possibly okada 
And then, you know, we don't know where Adam Cole is currently with his recovery, but that's happening. MJF possibly coming back, you know, between now and uh, I would say probably all in or all out, there's going to be a ton of changes to this company from visual changes to uh, talent, the positioning of that roster. A lot of changing. And, and, and I'm looking for that. Stuff. All right. Uh, Andrew, you're breaking up a little bit, but maybe we'll get to I, that last question and uh, and then we can get out of here. I think it's for me. And I think that's why it's breaking up. I don't know if this is for you, Vinny. <laughs> yes or no? Edibles in a bath while watching Graps? That is uh, definitely an Andrew Zarian question. <laughs> so of those three, uh, I watch Graps a lot. I, 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 I will not, I've, I've managed to admit I enjoy a nice uh, bath every once in a while, a nice hot bath. Uh, usually I don't combine those two. In fact, never. I have never combined those two. <laughs> But uh, I, I, I'll enjoy a, a nice, uh, go down and get a nice scented bath bomb and a, a, bottle, a glass of scotch and uh, enjoy a nice warm bath and a nice relaxing evening. And I, there's no problem with that at all. But uh, as far you know, as I figured out what the problem is, time, no. What's that? <laughs> I figured out why. That's when I write my reviews. Ah, okay. <laughs> and it never ends well for me. So maybe that's why I can't do reviews for wrestling shows. So uh, yeah, and Andrew, you have the the edibles in, in in the bath and watching wrestling, but you also have the hot shower while listening to Dave Meltzer and Brian's voice on Wrestling Observer Radio. No, it's that you. It's mo- thing, well, though. yes, actually, uh, on on Thursday it'll be Brian and and Vinny because that's that's when I listen. I will listen in the shower. <laughs> I I set it up where take, automatically. I thought I took a long shower. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, that's how I start my day with, with, uh, with, or, or it's Dave, you know, uh, talking to Garrett and I start talking back <laughs> Oh, gotcha. and I'm just having a conversation in the shower and I'm like yelling at Garrett. I'm like, no, that's not what happened. Actually. It, this is what happened on SmackDown. You know, I'm having a whole conversation here. A lot, a lot yeah. of my wrestling takes, takes uh, in front of water. I don't know why. Yeah. The nice, Dalton, nice brain exercise for you. Dalton yeah. Trumbo yeah. was an award-winning screenwriter who did most of his room bathtub. So you're not alone. There you, yeah, there you go. There you go. All right. Well, uh, we're going to end it here, but I have one last thing for. Oh, we do have one more $10 super chat. Let, let's just throw that oh. out there. Okay. From Lone okay. Wolf. Thoughts on the certain folks in the internet wrestling community shitting on those who talk WWE, but not the Grant. Grant. Oh, not the Grant suit as Janelle Grant suit as often. Um, I guess it's it's very similar to before you came on, Andrew and I were talking about how it can be a little hard to watch wrestling right now based yeah. on the Vince McMahon and Jan- the Janelle Grant lawsuit against Vince McMahon and how, mm-hmm. uh, you know, you're just constantly thinking about that while trying to watch something yeah. that we've been pretty much watching for our entire lives. Right. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure what these. Oh, I see. OK, I, I, I didn't know what all that meant. Um I don't want to sound how do I put this it's normal to be triggered thinking about this stuff and uh, it should not be ignored it should not be forgotten and uh, I, I don't uh, want you or anyone to uh, be re-traumatized but it should be you know at we we are it's the tip of the iceberg we're going to learn a lot more yeah uh, it may take some time but it's only going to get worse and uh don't think that just because one name is gone and out of the picture that all guilty parties have been uh exercised and punished uh more names are going to come out more uh, accusations are going to be made and, and uh, you know, it's, it's not going to go away. And um, I, 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 I guess, um, you know, most importantly, everyone needs to take care of their own mental health. Um, but if, you know, uh, uh, as far as being harassed online, you know, Twitter has a block button for a reason. I use it regularly every day, sometimes for, you know, I just block people just because uh, they're not even necessarily a, a, 
uh, uh, triggering or traumatizing or attacking. They're just trying to be funny. And I don't think they are. So, um, you know, protect yourself first. Uh, that's your priority. Um, but, you know, uh, uh, turning a blind eye to this story is not going to be a feasible option uh, in the near future. Yeah, I agree with you 100%. Yeah. And the, only, the other thing I would say to Lone Wolf is uh, stay as educated about this as you can, um, but also, you know, utilize the voices that you have the opportunity to utilize. Dave is constantly talking about it. Brian and Dave are constantly talking about it. Brian and I are talking about it. Andrew and I are talking about it. But we're all sort of going through the same thing. Uh, as I said, Jim Valley had has done two shows on, on this. And, you know, the, if you need to take uh, a little bit of time away because it's frustrating, uh, yes. you know, it's always going to be there. But at the same time, the people who are trying to dunk on you for trying to continue watching, like, j that's that's their own deal. Like, you, you can deal with what you deal with. Uh, peer pressure exists, but... You know, the you, you listen to the folks who who you respect. You don't necessarily have to get in the scrums of of yeah. the Twitter conversation. It's, it's why I'm not on Twitter as much as I used to be for that. The, la reason. the last place I want to have a conversation about the, uh, something yes. that serious is on Twitter. You yeah, know, yeah. I, and and we said at the top of the show. I mean, I I brought up the fact that I hadn't addressed this on one of my other shows uh, that I do with Rich. It just you know some shows it's not the appropriate subject matter because of the way that the show is paced and the way that the show goes you know i i i sometimes have a better time talking to garrett about this stuff because we take more of a serious approach here on observer live when on, on sundays where i could take a more serious approach but it is it is not going to go away I, I and i think a lot of people think that if it's not being discussed discussed as often as they want it's going to go it's not going away this is going to be here for a while. There's more information that's going to be coming out and, and we're going to continue covering it. You have to. That's your due diligence. That's your responsibility to the audience to some extent explain what is happening. You know, the more people understand what's going on here, the more important it is for, uh, for the business, for the industry, because once you put the, the, the magnifying glass on it, you know, hopefully it goes away. But if you're not, if it if it totally gets swept under the rug. Yeah. You know what changes yeah yeah and uh, a final thought on this to try to get something positive out of this segment um 800-656-HOPE is the phone number for the uh rape abuse and incest national network and hopefully if someone is listening to this uh they can get some of the help they need and uh uh you know th this is <sighs> there's a lot more terrible things going on than just pro wrestling there's, there's terrible things all over the world right now and hopefully if uh you're going through something right now you can get the help you need 800-656-HOPE all right that is a, a a positive place to end this and i want to thank you Vinny v check out the brian and Vinny show of course which is uh the hall of fame show uh, of this website and Vinny's a new podcast the big Vinny v show where he's doing yeah. some solo stuff and you will get to experience with Vince, kind of the, uh, you know, going through it and figuring the whole thing out on these early episodes. <laughs> that's so right, that's right. get him on the ground floor of, of doing the mm. solo stuff. And, of course, thank you to Andrew for being here, as always. Thank you, thank you. I am Double G. We will see you all when we see you. Peace out.